What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Today we're going to be looking at the totally rad 1980 Pontiac Turbo Firebird Indy Pace Car from MPC. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So now we wind the clock all the way back to 1980 as we check out this amazing Turbo Firebird Indy Pace Car from MPC. Now this was actually in a bigger box back in the day, which I can show you right now. And that box included this Firebird, the 69 Camaro, and the 86 Corvette. However, these are the instructions we got with the model. And then I also got this thing. This is Hobby Hints. That was pretty cool. Folds out to a big sheet, tells you everything that you want to know about building models, including like using airbrushes and the whole deal. Really nice bonus material from Ertl MPC. Then we have our decal sheet, which we'll look at at the end of the video. Now I did start to do some work on this. So uh, things like the body kit, they're all glued on. And uh, that, <laughs> that glue went yellow. There's our interior. We've got glass. We've got all these cool parts in here. Like our engine block, the Pontiac motor, probably the 400. Here's some more glass. I think that's for the Camaro shouldn't be in here. <laughs> and we got chrome in there as well and then tires and all these other great parts. So now we're going to look at these really righteous instructions here of our 80 Turbo Firebird Indy Pace car. Now this kit came out in 1986 but it is of course of an 80. Now if we just move this down a little bit we do get a bit of history of the Indianapolis 500 Pace car in here which is really cool. And then just move it one more time. And we can see the tires on here. So you've got the original stock wheels, and the tire, the backing plate, and the axle pin. And for the rear, we get that nice wheel again, the tire, and a wheel back. And then we've got custom wheels as well, so you could really spice up your car. Panel 2 shows the sub assembly. Here we have our radiator wall, the fan shroud, and the battery. And then step 3 is the intake manifold. So here we've got all our turbocharger pieces. And there's five right there, our distributor and the intake manifold. Panel four shows engine assembly A, and there we've got our valve covers and our cylinder head, our left and right hand side engine block with the transmission molded on the back. We got a little chrome filler cap there as well, and a chrome oil pan and our front cover. Then if we look at engine assembly five, which is B, there we've got our starter going on the side, our alternator, our fan belt, and our fan. Panel 6 shows the air cleaner going onto that intake manifold and then we've got this exhaust outlet that goes to the exhaust pipe. And there's our exhaust manifold there as well as one here and we've got a carburetor preheater tube and a turbo boost pipe and then this crossover manifold piece. Panel 7 shows the chassis from the rear. Here we have a drive shaft loop and our drive shaft, the exhaust dumps and uh, this little component here. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, <laughs> but there's our differential with the rear springs molded in place and then we've got our exhaust pipes as well. Panel 8 shows our radiator assembly being glued onto the chassis. There's one of the axle blocks that goes on to the top of our A-arms and then our engine drops in place and our wheels go through that little block. Panel 9 includes the options to put on these lake pipes. There of course are a three-piece manifold and you get them on both sides. So again, that's pretty cool. Now panel 10 shows our bucket seats going into the interior tub. You have a choice of gear shift levers. You got this nice steering wheel here and a dashboard and our optional CB radio. 10-4, good buddy. Now panel 11 shows all the body panels and things going on the back of our car. So here we have a rear spoiler and a rear pan. And then you'd add in your red tail lights in the back. It says mask front and rear bumpers and roof. See box art cover. Then paint dark gray to match the decals. Now step 12 shows the body going together. 
It says, if T-top is to be used, cut along score lines on inside of the roof. So here we'd remove this bar out of here, clip off this little coat hanger ring, which is weird. If T-tops is being used, remove bars from the windows. So there's our interior going up underneath in our firewall. Then we've got our front bumper and there's all these little bits that go inside there. The uh, front headlights, there's four of those, and the turn signals for the bottom. Now panel 13 begins the final body assembly bits. So here we have our hood, which should be sitting just on top there. Then our body drops onto the chassis. Here's our radiator hose. And uh, once it's all glued together, you move on to step 14. So panel 14 is actually for the pace car version, which includes the hood going onto the chassis again with our radiator hose. But this time around there's sport mirrors and rear and front wheel flares that glue on the sides. Finally, panel 15 is the decal placement for both the stock and the pace car. You would of course use the official pace car letters on the side if you're building the pace car, but all the rest would be for stock. And this is just really cool too, the Pontiac visors on the windows. Now here we have the body for our 1980 Firebird, and I have glued all the components on here. So there's that spoiler there and the rear bumper as well as the side flares and the front bumper. Now I did use some sheet styrene inside here just to really reinforce that nose on there because it is pretty thin along that area. Oh, unfortunately my glue's gone all yellow. There are some mold marks underneath here which I didn't correct. You do have to cut open the roof for the T panels there. Uh, it's not too bad, but one thing I did notice about this is here's the hood for it, which has a nice Pontiac uh, turbo bulge in there. But the problem is, look at the gaps in here and the hood doesn't quite fit right. And there's a lot of issues going on with it actually, which maybe I can uh, use a little bit of sheet styrene inside here along that gap just to widen out the hood. But overall, I do believe this is a little bit problematic of this kit. A little bit bogus, man. Here we have the chassis of the kit. And again, there are some mold marks under here as well as a couple little raised bumps and things. Not totally sure if you need to remove those or not, but uh, here's how the model is molded to the parts tree. And this is another area that's a bit bogus, man. Because as you can see, these are pretty thick posts and they just come right up into the back and there's no real nice, uh, you know, tapered down element to it or anything. They're just huge. So you're gonna need your saw right along here and saw through that in order to get rid of them. This does have those little blocks there with only one uh, position for the rear axle. I guess that's okay if you want this to ride at the stock height. Um, again, lots of thickness in here, just in this area where, uh, of course, the wheel arches are. But that's where you're gonna glue that L-shaped bracket in there and glue the A-arms up there and there and the engines into the holes. I'm not quite sure how nicely this will clean up and fit into the body. If you've built this kit before, let us know how well it goes together in the comments below. Here we have our interior tub, and there are some big issues in here with uh, these sink marks in the floor. They're really deep and really huge, as you can see here. Uh, not quite the best of molds. Again, though, the rest of the interior is not bad. The door panels are quite nice. It's got the column shift in the middle. It's got a, the automatic style pedals. And once we find the engine, we can actually see if it's got the automatic transmission or if it's a manual, because sometimes that does happen in these kits. And then there's our bench, or yeah, back bench seat there. Well, these are a little bucket, I guess. But still, I mean, it's not too bad. Unfortunately, though, the bottom is nice and smooth, just how the interior should have been. <laughs> but I don't know, for whatever reason, that's the way it is. Now here we have all the white components that make up the rest of the parts. So we've got our air cleaner and our exhaust manifolds and all the tubing for the turbo. There is a different style air cleaner, so I guess this is a non-turbo air cleaner. Then there's our engine. Now you'll note that the transmission on here is actually manual shift, so our pedals inside are incorrect. There's the intake manifold, our timing chain cover. This does look like the correct Pontiac style engine. And then there we've got our rear axle with uh, the leaf springs molded in place as well as our exhaust pipes and our differential little support there. 
there's our exhaust manifolds for off the side actually the the, the side pipes i should say <laughs> there's our battery our cylinder heads down here the radiator sh fan shroud the pins the radiator and the retaining wall the firewall the lower a arms the l-shaped bracket our dashboard steering wheel wheels backs then our seats and there's all our ex <coughs> exhaust manifolds and tubes actually one thing i don't see in here oddly enough is the drive shaft itself unless it's a chrome piece so I'll just bring some of these parts up into the camera and we'll have a better look at them. So here we have our bucket seat and the wheel backs and steering wheel. Now we can just take a look at this nice dashboard. There's a radio for listening to some ACDC Back in Black on, as well as a few other cool songs from 1980. Uh, the gauges don't look too bad in there, but one thing that I'm really wondering is what are all these little orange little specks coming up through the plastic on there? That's something weird, something unexpected, and hopefully will come off. Or, you know, get painted over and not be an issue. It might be mold release agent. That's why you always want to scrub these parts down before you glue them together. There's our engine with the transmission. Nice detailing on here. Again, the front timing cover looks just like how it's supposed to look. And there's our dashboard. Look at all the wiring on there. Pretty complex stuff. If we turn it over, there are mold marks underneath. Looks like rivets all through the back there. It's interesting. Again, not bad, not a bad kit at all. I do like these custom side pipes. They remind me of the ones from the 32 Ford, actually. I wonder, these aren't stripped, something I stripped them through in there. No, because there's a spoiler there. So again, yeah, they look pretty neat. I like all those little holes. Imagine drilling all those out. <laughs> That'd be quite crazy indeed. So that's basic uh, rundown of all our little white components. So now we can move on and check out some of the other cool things. Here we've got our chrome parts. And again, there's a lot of cool things on here. Another intake manifold. And I do believe this is the turbo one. And then all the turbo components, which are chrome. There's the stock wheels. And here's some custom ones, which are really cool. We'll take a look at it in a minute. There are some custom gauges here as well. So this kit, this part may have been used on some of the other MPC Firebirds. I don't know where that drive shaft went. It's completely gone. So I'll have to, I guess, fake one up out of plastic. Again, look at the nice detail work on the fan. So they really excelled with the chrome parts tree. I like these mag wheels. Those are interesting as well. And then of course our stock Firebird type wheels, very popular back in the day. And then our little grills up front and the parking lights. Oh no, those are the headlights. They're chrome. They're not clear. There's exhaust pipes as well. Little filler cap, shift levers, all kinds of cool detail. Again, some mold marks off the back, but nothing that couldn't be easily removed with some sandpaper just to smooth them out, make them lie down flat. Here's our clear components, which includes, of course, the rear window and the front windshield. Unfortunately, these were never put in a bag, so they did get scuffed up quite a bit. We also have our red tail lamps here, which again, really bring out that Pontiac look for the 80s. It's always nice to have that nice one solid uh, red transparency across the back. Just makes it look a lot nicer on the car instead of individual little rear tail lamps, at least in my opinion. Again, you can see that got scratched up quite a bit. Um, Maybe you guys can't see it too well, but it is foggy and <laughs> scratched. Again, very simplistic style of uh, glass in there. That again is like the old promo style where they just have one thing that would just pop into the car. Our tires for this kit are the BF Goodrich Radial TAs. And uh, one thing I find, these tires are quite nice because you get this really cool tread on here. But they also look almost like they're off-road tires, like something that's not really nice and slick that would be underneath this Pontiac in any way, shape or form. These would be more on like an off-road car, but they are a street tire. So again, maybe it's just the height of the tread and the height of the letters. I don't know. Now here we have our decal sheet, and I think this is the best feature of this entire model. You have the official Pace Car Turbo Firebird decal for the door, including what indie race this one was. There's our Pontiac for the windshield. Interesting, it showed one going on the back glass, but you only get the front one. Well, that's okay. There's our pinstripes going around the wheels and everywhere along the back. That nice Firebird in there, really cool stuff. 
There's our indie decal with a little tire with the wings. And then our hood scoop right there. And then the punch out. So that would go on the top on the, where it ramps up. This is really weird how it's got TR, AM, SAN, Trans Am supposed to be. But why it's all broken up, that's interesting. I think it was a copyright issue. But anyway, there's our decals, looks really good. Well, I hope you found this video most triumphant in choosing your next model car kit. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other.